Reddit, what is the most extreme ridiculous example of strict parenting that you've ever seen? There's this kid at my work, child care, that still can't watch anything other than a G-rated movies. Sixth grade, we had a parent tell us she expected us to keep the hair out of her child's eyes at all times. What the frick do we do with that? Do we just follow her? We have 200 kids. In the 8th grade I got a C on a mid-semester letter home in algebra and my dentist mentioned to my stepmom that I could improve my dental plan by brushing a little more. I spent 6 months grounded to a chair in the kitchen where all I was allowed to do was brush my teeth and do homework algebra assignments. I was required to hand in all the odd numbers from the book every single day. On the weekends, I had 2 assignments and a pop quiz. If I got an A on the pop quiz. I got 4 hours out of the chair to sit in my room. I aced algebra for the rest of the year, but I still quote this as an absolute overreaction. The punishment did not fit the crime. I was not allowed to have bad guy action figures, just good guys. I ended up drawing the bad guys on cardboard and having the worst battles ever. Reminds me of little girls who weren't allowed Ken dolls to go with their barbies. Lot of friends with lesbian barbies cause of that or pretend this one is a guy. I have a friend whose parents thought she ate too much bread, so banned her from having any, and grounded her for two weeks when they caught her sneaking toast. This was when we were 15. My best childhood friend wasn't allowed to pick out her own clothes. Even though she practically had no choice in the matter when it came to shopping, her crazy controlling father still insisted on laying out her outfit for the next day, or, at the very least approving her clothing choice. This went on until she was about 17. She got herself a job, shopped in secret and started sneaking around so she could dress like a mega skank. Her dad once found her sack of dirty clothes he called them, and attempted to ground her. She ran away, shacked up with an abusive loser and that's when we stopped hanging out. I hear she's a stripper now. Way to go daddy -o. I seriously wonder how parents like these expect anything other than this to happen. I used to have sleepovers at a friend's house, and her father would sit with us to watch our movies, and fast forward PG rated kissing scenes. We were 17. Maybe he was trying to protect you from cooties, the deadliest of the kissing diseases. When we were 19 and home from college, we went to a friend's house to watch a movie. Her parents asked to talk to her about halfway through, and by the time the movie ended we realized we hadn't seen her since. So we go out into the next room and she's sitting in the corner reading a bible. Apparently her parents thought we were being too loud and instead of asking us to keep it down they put her in time out. We politely excused ourselves and went elsewhere. My friend's father has a list of rules for his house that, if you just read them over, seem like regular family rules. No drugs, be home by 9, dinner at 6.30, do your homework, don't take things, nothing weird there right? Wrong, any kind of drug found in his possession, prescription or over the counter, not even cough drops, grounded for a month, not home by 6.30pm, no food, not home by 9pm, locked out. He had to walk to my house on multiple occasions just to find a place to sleep. But by far the worst of the worst was that anything, anything, found in his possession that was not believed to be his, must be stolen and should and will be destroyed, trashed, thrown away. He had an autographed painting of 2D from the band Gorillaz that was a gift from a mutual friend. Ripped up the moment he got home. My parents were very strict. Examples. When my dad was done eating dinner, you were done eating dinner, but, you had to eat everything on your plate, too. He was a quick eater, too, so I'm a quick eater. Almost any infraction resulted in a belt whipping, lie, whipping, break something, whipping, grade below a B, whipping, late for curfew, whipping, not answering as quickly or as thoroughly as my dad wanted, whipping, we weren't always whipped, I was punched a couple times, once in the stomach and once in the head. One brother was shot in the back with his BB gun when he and his friend were shooting on our property and a BB ricocheted and accidentally hit his friend. Another brother was beaten several times before he was 6 and then just ignored because he wasn't salvageable. My parents are the main reason it took me so long to have a child of my own. I didn't want to frick them up. I now know myself well enough at 40 to realize I won't make all the mistakes my parents did. Just to be clear, your dad's a criminal. Guilty of criminal battery. 
My stepfather installed a little gadget on the phone that cuts the line every night at 11pm and turned back on at 7am. I was 17, home alone on a weekend, and had our house broken into which led to our TV getting stolen. It ended up being my fault because I didn't call the police. I had an Iranian friend in middle school, pretty hairy. Her parents decided one year that her grades weren't good enough, and as punishment, she wasn't allowed to shave wax remove any facial hair. I've never seen such a thick unibrow. That is freaking cruel. When I worked in a the portrait studio in Sears a lady brought her two children in and wanted their portraits only taken separately. She was very clear that she did not want them together whatsoever. Anyway, I was photographing her two-year-old son while she was yelling at her three-year-old daughter for seemingly no reason. When I asked what the matter was, because I was afraid she may be abusing the child from the crying, she told me that her daughter had misbehaved by reading a children's book called Five Little Ducklings when she told her to sit, be still, and not speak. The girl was three years old for frick's sakes. I thought parents were supposed to encourage reading, especially at that age. When I was in 5th grade my buddy was verbally berated by his stepdad for about 5 full minutes for not lacing his high top sneakers all the way up. His stepdad made him lace them up right in front of me while he yelled at him. This kid also routinely got in trouble for getting dirty, his bike dirty, drinking soda, eating popcorn, he had braces oh no, pretty much anything. I ran into that kid years later when he was just getting sober from heroin. Female friend of mine who has a 4.0 was grounded because she hung out with us on a Friday night and her mom viewed that as her putting her social life before academics and college. We're seniors. I have so many. Had to ask permission anytime I wanted food or a drink. Not that bad, right? Well, this included water. Also, not allowed to watch basically any slightly off-color movies or TV shows, I wasn't even allowed Teletoon, not sure the American equivalent, grounded from Reading because it happened to be a thing I liked doing, not allowed to stop playing a video game until I beat a hard part, even if I was crying, still hungry after a meal, drink water, nearly got in trouble for saying hasta la vista, baby, while playing because the movie it was from was inappropriate. Luckily, I managed to convince them that this was something everyone knew. Had to write hundreds of lines as punishment for various things. I wrote more lines at home than the worst kids at school. I learned to write with my left hand for a while because my right one would cramp up too badly to finish. My school called Cass once because I was crying into my desk at school. I had a headache and didn't want to say anything because in order to give me something for it my school had to call home and get permission get something dropped off. And last time they'd done that when I got home my dad had said something like I worked hard all day, migraines blah blah, if you call home for something like that again I'll give you something to complain about, nothing really came of the cast thing. Any abuse just continued verbally emotionally and calmed down physically, while being yelled at, basically any reaction was forbidden. Crying led to I'll give you something to cry about type reactions, anger and accidental smiling were obviously out as well. I once flinched because my father accidentally spat in my face while yelling at me and he said something to the effect of what's the matter, did I spit in your face with the s's representing what you might imagine, gosh, I'm having trouble remembering any other ones right now, but I assure you, there were more, edit, remembered a couple more things, we weren't allowed to leave the table until we finished every single bite of food on our plate, if we stayed there until bedtime, it'd be there for breakfast in the morning. My brother once put what my father considered too much ketchup on his meal because he wasn't very fond of whatever it was, probably breaded fish, so my father emptied basically the entire thing of ketchup onto his plate and made him eat it all. A friend in high school had terrible parents. They made him pay for the food he ate out of their pantry, and were all around ridiculously strict. His older sister ran away at 18. I'm surprised they weren't taken from them by authorities, honestly. Also once he was given a $700 800 Taylor acoustic guitar by a generous man at his church, and his parents took it from him and later sold it because it was a distraction from his all-A grades. Something about how playing guitar is a privilege he had to earn or some bulls. There was a kid in my school who wasn't allowed to watch The Simpsons and would tell his mum if someone tried to watch it if he was around. I didn't like him very much. I wasn't allowed to stay out at all as a kid. I had stupidly early bedtimes up until I was 18. 
Figured out pretty quickly that my mum just wanted to get rid of me. She would keep checking on me, yelling and screaming if I wasn't asleep. I wasn't even allowed to read a book. I would just sit and watch kids my age and younger play outside when I was a kid. The annoying thing was, I was expected to be away from the house all day in the summer holidays. I would just grab my bike and cycle around the tiny town all day doing nothing. A lot of the time I would end up in the park, hiding around the pond, watching kids my age play football, soccer, or just hanging out. She made sure I didn't have any friends. I wasn't allowed to go to people's houses or have people over. I was made to feel awful if I tried and gave up at an early age. She never let me have parties or even have anyone over on my birthday. I didn't even attempt to go out with people after I was 9 stroke 10. I couldn't make any mistakes otherwise it was like the world ended in our house. I was this awful kid who was always bad and was treated that way even if I didn't do anything that warranted the yelling, screaming and hitting. I always felt like I was failing even though I got good grades and didn't get in trouble. But if any little thing happened it was bad. She wouldn't let me have a lift to school no matter how sick hurt I was. I wasn't allowed to be sick or hurt. She would yell at me if I asked or wanted to stay home. When I got sick from stress when I was 8-10, she didn't try and make me feel better. She yelled at me, screamed at me and blamed it on me. When I busted my foot in karate, it was an accident. Roundhouse kick caught an elbow. She made me walk the 2 miles to school the next day. It took me over an hour and a half to make a 15 stroke 20 minute trip and she made sure my bike had punctured tires so I couldn't ride it. I wasn't allowed to go get it checked out either. It was badly swollen, black and painful but she told me it was fine. That does it, I am out. There is some fricked up stuff in this thread, but denying medical care takes the cake. Some people shouldn't be allowed to raise children. Not exactly strictness, but this was definitely an example of parents being unduly hard on a kid. My friend's parents had been divorced since he was young. In middle school, he really wanted this jacket for Christmas. Both parents got him one. He then had to make sure when he was with one parent, he wore the one they got him and not the one the other parent got him and vice versa. One time he slipped up, and one parent noticed he was wearing a different one and asked him where he got it. The parent was then mad at him for it. I knew a kid whose dad was in the military. Whenever he did absolutely anything all pops frowned upon he basically put him through a mini boot camp. Also the first time I showed up his mom lectured me on how I held a fork. I never went back. My family makes fun of me for the way I hold my fork. They say I hold it like a European. My dad wouldn't let me get Lego kits unless they were for my age group. I just wanted to build crap. My dad, who is an engineer, always bought me the most complicated Lego and director sets when I was little. I'm pretty sure it was just so that he could put them together when they proved to be too difficult for me. When I was 16 I was going out with a girl of the same age, whose parents demanded she be back home by 1900 every day. They'd hit her if she was late. I found out later. Pardon me while I never complain about my parents again. I knew a couple kids that couldn't watch the Animaniacs because the word maniacs was in the title. Then their mother went and stole some money from the PTA. How did your parents freak you up? My mom insists on guilt trips and emotional martyrdom. My dad is emotionless. The former produces the latter. Comparing me to everyone. Now I do it and have very low self esteem. When I realized my mom was doing this to me I asked her how she would feel if I started comparing her to other moms. She seemed to feel what it was like to be in my shoes when I told her that. My mom can't resist gossiping and generally criticizing people places and things. Pretty much a constant flow of negativity. So guess who? At 25 has to make a concerted effort not to always criticize things? This guy. My mother grew up in communist China. In an effort to make sure my sister and I didn't grow up into spoiled brats who didn't understand the small pleasures in life, we would spend a lot of time with our maternal grandparents, who lived in the Chinese countryside and are subsistence farmers. No electricity. No heating. No running water, no paved roads, etc. It worked. I grew up loving the countryside, the farm work, the natural beauty, the tight-knit community, etc. And I am such a penny pincher my mother actually begs me to spend more money on myself. I've been wearing a jacket with a hole in it for years, 
because I feel like I can't justify buying a new one when the current one can still be worn. My laptop hasn't had a functioning sound card for a year, but I still use it because I can type my homework and read websites. When I got my license my parents wanted to buy me a brand new car, which I turned down, and so on. Basically they made me a Scrooge. Man, my parents are just like this. You have to realize that you're saving your money up for literally nothing. I like to call this behavior drag owning. Never let me play video games as a child. Now I'm in engineering school and I'm useless at Super Smash Bros. Over 30 million children in the US never learned how to wava dash. Donate today, and bring these children out of a scrublord environment into a pro home. By not splitting up when their marriage had gone to crap. Staying together for the kids rarely helps. A lot of times the kids might actually prefer their parents divorce. When two married people are clearly unhappy it seeps into everything and makes home life difficult. My parents deliberately taught me the barnyard animals wrong when I was a toddler. They swapped ponies and cows, chickens and pigs, goats and sheep, and others. I was very confused when I got that toy that spins the arrow to an animal and makes the animal noise. I would say, mommy, the cow doesn't say moo. I still occasionally hesitate with goats and sheep. If you were praised for being smart as a child and now feel crippling sensations of guilt and inadequacy when you don't immediately understand or know how to do something, clap your hands. Clap clap. I respect my parents more than anyone in my life, and they've earned that respect as far as I'm concerned, but those same decisions that made it that way took a serious toll on my mental health since I was about 8. My dad died on 9-11-01, in the exact way you'd think based on the date. He was a newly promoted FDNY captain, and as such he was moving around a lot between firehouses, and I'd get to know all the guys. My whole life I had been to the firehouse for every holiday, I'd barbecue with the guys and I even tapped a keg for the Christmas party in 2000. Well when 9-11 happened, I don't want to give away any identifying information but our firehouse was hit really hard. As a kid who has been meeting his dad's friends his whole life up to age 8, and one day 3 stroke 4 of them are dead, your dad's dead, and your entire family is shaken up, telling you to turn off the TV and your grandma whispers he might hear something. Obviously I don't blame my parents for 9-11, I don't blame my dad for being a fireman, or his dad for passing on the tradition. I don't blame him for being at work that day, or for going in, but there will always be a weird line of questioning in my life that goes something like, what did he think about when he went in? Did he think about us? Was my dad suicidal? When you're in the middle of a national tragedy at a young age, it's a scar on your life. That wasn't helped by the fact that this was simultaneously a family death, a work incident, an act of war, a homicide, and a national tragedy with a hint of suicide. I've met a lot of people who were my age when it happened. 21 now, isn't that kind of weird, and they all turn into old souls when it's brought up. Some people get weird at the thought of going to a funeral or wake, but we've all been to dozens of services, mostly memorials. I know I've personally been to about 100, and it never stops. No one will ever forget to wish me a spiritual day or whatever. Basically the whole thing gave me a really screwed up view on life and death. Coupled with the fact that I was going to the funerals of my dad's friends, and of my friend's dad's more often than any 8 year old should be. Sometimes I wonder if he just ran away and used the whole thing as a way to get out. At this point he's more a collection of stories and loose memories that might have never happened, so I can never rule this out, though it seems unlikely. I'm told I look just like him, but I wouldn't recognize him at this point. They did their best. But as the old saying goes, you don't get a choice in fricking up your kids. You just get a choice in how you frick them up. I was basically avoidant until I got married, and even now it's still more comfortable for me to deal with my own crap than bring someone else into it. With me it's more like I don't want to burden people with my problems. Like I'd be bothering them, even when they offer to help. My dad got a dog when I was 8 as a way to sink his claws into my brother and me. My parents were divorced and he knew we didn't want to visit him on account of the drug use and violent mood swings. I can't tell you how many times he called us to tell us he was going to have our dog put down, have my stepdad adopt us, and move to Florida where we would never see him again, just to make us cry. He beat our dog, constantly, not because he didn't do anything wrong, 
but because he could. The dog was my everything. When I was too scared to sleep, he laid with me and comforted me. He was more understanding, caring, and empathetic than any person I've ever met. I always tried my best to protect him even though I was too little. On Sunday my dad called me to tell me my dog wasn't doing so well. Something told me that out of the countless times he had called to tell me my dog was dying just to make me upset, that he was telling the truth. Immediately I called out of work, booked a train ticket, and went home. What I found was an emaciated, half-dead pit bull lying on the living room floor wearing a freaking diaper. He was so weak he couldn't hold his own head up and his nostrils had crusted over. He hadn't eaten or drank water in days. Right then and there I made an appointment at the vet and didn't give my dad a choice. He had tortured me and this dog for over 17 years, but now I'm calling the shots. When you love someone, you let them go. You don't let them suffer and die in pain. You let them go with what little dignity they have left. I will never be the same because of what I saw on that living room floor and I will never forget the sounds of his last breaths. Not being able to communicate properly and threatening suicide since I was 6. As a result, I'm reluctant to let women into my life for fear that they're as unstable as my mother, or, they will meet my mother and think that I'm as insane as she is. Yeah, I don't think you and, a girl I liked at the time, would work out very well. I always figured you'd want to be with someone more like your mom, a family friend, number, nobody nope nope nope, heck no, number. My dad was a vocal opponent to a rising dictator and we had to flee the country. How can I turn a blind eye to any injustice I see when I have to live up to my father's shadow? I thank him every day for giving me a high target to hit. Well, this is a lot more comforting than the sexual abuse stories. My parents never made me do anything so I did nothing. They're Catholic. I had a pop up -ish book as a kid called The Jolly Postman in which a mailman delivers letters to a bunch of people, and each of the people on his route got an actual physical letter that you could take out of an envelope and read. One of them was a witch. Unbeknownst to me, my parents removed the letter to the witch and replaced it with their own handwritten letter from Jesus, and a prayer card, asking the witch to change her ways and follow him. Long story short. The first time I got a boner I thought that was God's punishment for thinking about naked people. Never taught me anything about finances, wouldn't even talk about it in front of me. Now I'm sidled with crazy student loan debt and I just get dumbfounded at my bills. I know it was just their way of keeping me from worrying, which I did way too much as a kid anyway, but now I have no idea what makes for normal finances. Also, my dad committed suicide the summer I turned 20, so I was pretty self-destructive for a while. Come join us at our personal finance. They playfully made fun of me a lot. I didn't like it though. It made me insecure, even though I'm a skinny and okay looking person. Same here, especially about music. When I got the guts as an adult to pursue it it turned out that I'm actually a pretty decent singer. Despite having had gigs and the like, I'm still nervous practicing at home because I half expect someone to start asking me what I'm doing to that cat. They should have let me do more things on my own. I wasn't able to cook breakfast until I was 13 and I'm afraid, at 18, to call for a doctor's appointment. They should also have made me watch less TV. Sure, I would have hated them but I'm thinking acting like the people I saw on TV made me terribly anxious. I don't blame them, though, for this. I was an immature kid who should have left that fantasy world sooner. I'm afraid, at 18, to call for a doctor's appointment. If you call pretty much any decent doctor's office and explain that you've never booked an appointment before and they need to handhold you through the process with crayons and unicorns, they are usually on top of that. My dad yelled a lot, loud scary yelling, so now I'm afraid of being in trouble I guess. Now I hide from my problems a lot more than I should because I don't want to get yelled at. I get that. Spilling a drink was a huge deal. Getting an A in class not so much. So I learned to hide and lie about anything bad and didn't really try to do good because there really wasn't any difference. I was rarely rewarded but frequently chastised. My mom was an alcoholic and my dad was a financially manipulative verbally and emotionally abusive maniac with physical tendencies. I had a great childhood. Same, except my dad was all of these things and my mom was a doormat enabler. They don't understand me and they never tried to. 
they never gave me the love or encouragement parents are known for. And worst of all, they brought me up teaching me that girls can't do what boys can. My father constantly told me I was fat as a teen. I wasn't. Also, his favorite phrase was that's not good enough. If I forgot something, didn't ace a test, screwed up a note playing an instrument, didn't eat all my dinner, that's not good enough. I still have body image issues and struggle with perfectionism. My parents split when I was 5, moved across the country. My mother remarried to a guy with kids, grew up in a small house with 6 brothers, received no hugs, only criticism because I was her oldest. Only interaction I've ever had with women has been romantic interest so I can't make friends with women probably due to both of those reasons. Even though I'm a confident, charismatic, and extroverted person I feel like there's a part to women I'm missing and just generally feel lost and hopeless. In so many ways, I was born and raised in an extremely Christian environment, attended church every Sunday, was present at youth groups and conferences, was there for lunches that the church sometimes held after services, attended VBS for many many years and even helped out with many of them when I got older. You get the idea. Very devout Christian family. Everything was okay, until I became a teenager and when my mother became the children's pastor at our current church. She caused a lot of turmoil in a toxic relationship that I had, which I had no clue was toxic and was the only person I had at the time, became angry when she found out I was curious at one point, and refused to get me professional help even though I told her I was depressed for a year and was suicidal and sought after self-harm to seek relief from the pain I was enduring. It took me telling a teacher that I was going to overdose one night and having said teacher escort me to the hospital to get my mother to allow me to get antidepressants, which I'm still on today. I have not seen a counselor or therapist for my problems even though I've brought it up, because if I go it will just explode into another fight. I've tried so many times to be real about my feelings to her, only to be shut down by blunt replies or ones that are not supportive in the slightest. She frequently tells me that my only friends which are online ones due to my social anxiety, don't actually care about me. She constantly criticizes me for almost anything, and about two months ago found out I was agnostic atheist, and nearly kicked me out of the house when I had no job or source of income. About two to three weeks ago, she told me to take a plastic bag and tie it over my head, and said she was taking my brother to see someone for his depression. But yet she never gave me that opportunity. I legitimately hate my parents, more specifically, my mother. I just wish she could have have accepted me and taken me as I am. But instead she has to live with an angry and resentful daughter who will want nothing to do with her mother once she moves out. Please, any parents reading this, I know you may not agree with some things your children do, believe in, or will possibly become. But please, they need to know you're there for them and that you love them just the same, no matter what happens. The best thing to do, in my eyes, is offer your full support to them, letting them know you're there and behind them, 100%, even if they may shrug you off sometimes. Also, as a side note, if your child admits to something being wrong, don't shrug it off and tell them to pray about it, if they're suicidal. Don't tell them to just do it then. If your child feels endangered of harming themselves in any way, please get them professional help immediately. Thank you. What is the most ridiculously strict rule a parent you know has had for their child? My sister and I weren't allowed to murder pedestrians. My childhood friend wasn't allowed to play with her own toys. Her room was spotless and the shelves were full of new toys, yet she played with the crappy, old ones. When I asked, she said mom doesn't let me play with those because they're new. I still don't get it. That is how villains are born. My favorites from my own adolescence. 1. No two articles of black clothing may be worn in the same outfit. This would constitute being goth. 2. Black or red underwear or bras are expressly forbidden. Only girls who expect to show them off wear black or red underwear. 3. No red nail polish. The Queen of England says only W wear red nail polish. 4. No black nail polish. Also considered goth. 5. No blue nail polish. If I were to get into a car accident, the paramedics might think I was dead because my fingernails were blue. And if a paramedic saw you walking around with blue nail polish he might try and cut your head off assuming that you were a zombie. Paramedic aren't trained to tell the difference between blue nail polish and a dead hand. 
not being able to talk to the opposite gender, after the girl's parent found out about the girl having a BF. Can't have friends over when parents aren't there, he is 22. One time we got caught at his house when his parents were not there and his mom continued on to call 5 22 year old guys parents to tell them what their sons had been up to. To this day my parents say it was the hardest they have ever laughed from a phone call. My friend couldn't watch the Fairly Odd Parents until the age of 15 because the parents thought Vicky the babysitter was too mean. They were 15, near 16, be in bed by 7.30pm. My neighbors across the street did this, but it was always, when the sun went down, that meant 9 in the summer and 4.30 in the winter, strange. I know someone who at 19 was not allowed to drive on the highway, she was also not allowed to drive at night, in the rain, or anything but perfect weather. Her parents also picked her up from my house once because my brother had friends over as well. We were 17 at the time and my parents were home. Boys and girls should obviously not be in the same house. That's how pregnancies happen. When I was a teenager, I knew a guy, as a friend of a friend, who, despite being a teenager, had parents so protective of him that he was only allowed to go to parties if they could come with him. Maybe they were raging alcoholics. Can't have Facebook because of internet predators. He's 18. Now that you are 16 years old, I think you are responsible enough to have a glass of water in your room. My friend was so excited when her parents told her that. My son has just been allowed to do the same. He is too. One stroke too. 17 year old homeschooled male. Parental controls. Set so restricted he could only go on Nickelodeon Disney Channel websites. On the computer. Only allowed to read certain books Christian. No radio. Only Christian contemporary CDs. They had some kind of chip in the TV so he could only watch G rated stuff. So yeah. Even some shows on Nickelodeon were too mature. He could not say wow this sucks, without getting grounded BC it was erotic. He was not allowed to make friends on his own. His parents set them up via play dates through the church. His parents were so out of touch with reality that they would buy him extremely age inappropriate stuff as presents and expect it to be developmentally appropriate. VeggieTales, Disney Junior, Jake and the Neverland Pirates toys themed gifts, etc. For a late teenage boy, I feel bad for him. He wasn't a bad kid and never had any conduct behavior issues prior to this. The parents were just terrified of anything secular and worldly. He was a senior in high school. Be home by 5pm on weekdays. 5.30 weekends. He can drive a car if he asks, but every time he uses it, he must wash it inside and out. His father would take a picture of the odometer before the son took the car anywhere and would get an estimation of the distance. And upon the son's return he would check the odometer. They locked the son in his room at night and read his texts every evening. For his cell phone voicemail, it was just his father's voice saying this is s phone. If you are a boy, leave a message. If you are a girl, hang up and never call back. The second he graduated high school he fled and joined the marines. Now he's successful and hasn't spoken to them in 8 years. When I was younger, I played baseball with a boy who was never allowed to watch anything besides ESPN. He didn't know who Spongebob was. Didn't exactly follow the rules, but if my mum was to have her way, I wouldn't be allowed to talk to girls until I was a rich 25 year old doctor with a big house. At which point I'll automatically have a nice Korean wife. She would also have moved in with me at that point. Don't really remember much pre-high school, but had tutoring for every subject since year 3 or 4. I would have to do a homework set of year 12 math work when I was in year 7 when I got home. Dinner at 6pm. No exceptions. Bedtime was 8.30pm until I just flat out refused for 2 years. At which point she finally gave up insisting. Had to sleep with the electric blanket on, which I just switched off when she was sleeping. Does not go well with Australian summers. My insomnia was blamed on me being a disrespectful son. Didn't play any computer console games until year 7. Didn't even really know of the concept of computer games. When I was handed a copy of Counter Strike 1.6 by my new high school friends. Was not allowed to play at all. Well, 
until she fell asleep and I had free reign with her. Ha ha ha. Was so dedicated for this outlet that I had to play at lowest settings at 15 FPS, using the trackpad of my laptop to aim. Needless to say, I sucked. I wasn't allowed out of the house, except to go to school and tutoring, bar maybe one or two movies. This went on until I became an adult and moved in with my dad. Also no allowance money, if that counts for anything. So I couldn't actually buy anything until I was 18. Shy of maybe some cheap snack I could buy with the coins I found on the street and around the house when she wasn't looking. I knew a family which ate dinner in alphabetical order by course. So, asparagus then chicken then rice. They weren't allowed to eat drink anything blue because it was unnatural. I knew a friend of a friend that was allowed no screens, TV, computer, etc. Period. Someone close to me was never allowed at sleepovers, ever. First night that was spent out of the house was mandatory college orientation. I was not allowed to talk to strangers. Not ridiculous, huh? Until you think of how many strangers speak to you in harmless ways every day. And I was not supposed to respond in any way. So basically ignore people being nice to me. Prayer. All the freaking time. Before and after meals. Before bed. Before school, after school, after every single tiny infraction. Yeah, my mother was an ordained minister. That sucked. She was convinced that everyone that didn't live with us or go to church with us was pure evil. <laughs> my dad had a ridiculous one. No curry allowed in the house, ever. Not a takeaway or anything. And no way were we allowed to cook a curry in the house. It was made very clear to us as children and adults that there would be severe consequences if we broke the rule. He wasn't allergic or anything, just didn't like curry. My parents were fundamental Christians. They made my sister and me say beep every time there was a curse word on TV or in real life. It took me at least 6 months to break that habit after I left for college. Nothing more embarrassing than watching a movies with friends or a date and saying beep out of habit. I still do it once in a blue moon. I'm almost 30. A guy I knew was not allowed to watch Power Rangers growing up. The reason his parents gave him, if their powers weren't from God, where did they get them from? I crap you not. Not ridiculously strict, but sad. My computer science classmate, after a series of interviews, got an offer to do a paid internship at Google in Silicon Valley. 60k a year and free flight and housing and the potential to work there full time upon graduation. But her parents wouldn't let her accept it because they didn't like the idea of her living on her own. So she turned it down and ended up working locally at a small company. You're not allowed out after dark this was enforced all through high school. Even by grade 12. This time of year it's dark by 5-6pm. And this included after school activities. A 6pm movie with friends. And prom. Prom. My friend has to stick to a diet of applesauce and water when his mom is not home. His mom is afraid he will choke. He is 18 next month. My in-laws didn't let their kids watch the Olympics because some of the uniforms were too skimpy. My friends made fun of me because my mom wouldn't let me wash my hands at the sink because the soap would streak it. She is a cleaning fanatic. I grew up thinking it was normal to wash my hands in the bathtub until late middle school. An old best friend of mine. We met each other in grade 1 and quickly became friends. Her mother had always been a smother mother but the kind of rules that were set just kept on getting progressively more and more intense. She was never allowed to indulge in cake at birthday parties, dessert after dinner at a friend's house or even candy at Halloween. I swear her mother had her brainwashed to believe that everything that brought her an ounce of joy was evil. She would never be allowed to come hang out with us after school, well into high school, and anything that took place after 4pm had to be planned weeks in advance. Her mother would make her study and practice her drawings. To be fair she is a talented as frick artist, well into the evening, at least midnight. As far our trips to the beach or to the city, no freaking way, no pop culture, no cartoons, no real world experience. I can say with confidence that her mother stunted her social personal skills by at least half a dozen years. She has immense difficulty meeting new people and social cues to her are practically non-existent. The kicker was a few years ago when her mother followed her to university. Yup, she moved a few provinces over and her mother and her shared a one bedroom apartment. Her mother is freaking married. 
she left her husband to go be a smother mother to her 19 year old daughter at university. I don't know about you guys but I find this pretty outrageous. No movies other than PG-13. She was 17. Not me but a friend. No posters in their rooms. No listening to music other than religious crap. We were really into Green Day at the time so that was rough. And the mom picked out all of her outfits every day. We were 12. That's why you run away and start the greatest rock band the world has ever seen. Not sure if this was the parents doing, or she was just in her head too much, but my sister knew a girl who went to confession when she caught herself going over the speed limit. My cousin and his bearded wife have two girls, one around 6 or 7 and the other around 4. His wife does not allow the children to watch any movies where the children have revolted against their parents. They are not allowed to watch Finding Nemo because Nemo says I hate you to his dad. They are not allowed to eat candy because mama likes them skinny. When they visit his parents they have to be in the absolute dark when going to bed. Around 7pm. There is tin foil on the windows to block the light coming in. There always has to be a fan on and no one else in the house is allowed to make any noise. We all have to go to bed at 7 o'clock just so we don't wake them up. They are being homeschooled by this woman with no extracurricular activities. When I was working retail, a mother was looking for a gift for her son and asked me what was popular with the boys. I told her Angry Birds. She said she didn't let him play that because something angry could have a bad influence on him. My own parents. We lived about 5 miles from a lake. It was supposed to be a treat to go swimming there. Could only go into too ankle deep though. You can drown in a teaspoon of water. When I was 12 I went camping with friends at a lake with a dam. Everyone was jumping and it was way over our heads. After 2 days of them bugging me to get in, I do. I drown. Someone in the crowd saved me. Next weekend my mother takes, traumatized, me to her pool. Tells me to get in and don't get out until I can swim across the pool. Worst way to get permission to swim, by drowning. My cousins are 15 and 17, soon to be 18. Their parents will not let them watch PG-13 movies, and limit their television by not having cable and making their kids have to get parental consent before they can watch a show on Netflix rent a show from the library. The 17 year old was only just allowed to get his license, and only so he can drive himself to work and school. He's not allowed to go anywhere else. Both of them have to be in bed by 8.30pm. The daughter is not allowed to shop for clothes without her mom to make sure it's appropriate. Oh, did I mention they still have a babysitter? Their parents have been horribly strict their whole lives. If they got toys for their birthdays Christmas, they would all be donated. Books were the only acceptable gift. Ugh. I could go on and on about their ridiculous rules. A friend of mine's parents forced the whole family to pray the rosary every time they were in the car together. No matter how short or long the ride. Once his parents let him get his license, he felt pretty dang liberated, at 22. My cousin was not allowed to watch or read Harry Potter. My uncle and his wife are mega Catholics. She was also not allowed to walk on the road until 14, which meant going to a friend's house involved getting a drive, even three doors down. My uncle's wife also told my other aunt, me, other cousin, sister-in-law, stepsister, mother, and co-worker that we were all going to heck for being gay. There's a whole lot of queer in my family. I told her at least the bus ride there would be fun. She had to roll a dice to go out with friends. If it was odd she could go. If even she had to stay in with the family that many days. Supposed to make her value her family time and stop her being out so much. All I ever saw it do was reduce her to her sobbing mess. I will forever regret not telling the sea father he was indeed a sea that day. People who grew up with strict parents, what was the most unreasonable rule? My dad once heard my sister say fart and got really angry because it was not ladylike so he prohibited us using it. Instead we were to say noise that came from behind which made it even funnier to me. Lomfeo. Noise that came from behind sounds like the literal English translation of another language's word for fart. I'm dying. That's hilarious. My, now, wife's parents wanted an itinerary of where we would be on every date. She was 19 at the time but still living at home. I thought they were asking in a more general way so I answered well we're headed to a show, then probably dinner, maybe a coffee after. Unacceptable. 
Which show? What time would we be physically inside the venue? When did the show end? Which restaurant? What time will you be eating? Which coffee shop? I was just like eh. Hasn't really thought that far ahead. We'll let you know. She can't leave till we know. I just made some crap up. Seemed to placate them. From that point on I would just rattle off some bulls and do whatever we wanted. Very weird people. My first throwaway. I was an unwanted child that my parents decided to keep out of pity as I was always told growing up. I wasn't allowed out of the house for anything other than school or family events. I couldn't see friends ever. Wasn't allowed a phone until 16 which was only for emergencies and checking in when I got to school and when I left. I would get beat occasionally the worst was for a bit of poop not flushing. Everything had to be spotless. My bed had to be made by 7am. If I did something that didn't like I would never hear the end of how terrible I was. Finally when I was 17 I snapped when my mother hit me in the face with a rolling pin. I pushed her against the bench and punched her in the face a few times. My father came in hearing all the noise and charged at me. We wrestled and tried hitting each other a bit until I got on top of him and grabbed a plate of the bench and smashed it on his head. I got up and ran out of the house and went to a friend's house. That was the last I ever saw of them. Got on a bus and never went back. They got my new cell phone number 7 months after I left. The moment she said it was her I told her I hope she and my father both die and to never contact me again and hung up. It's been 2 years since that call and I've had people tell me they asked for my number, address and stuff but the only people they know who know that stuff are people that know to some degree why I hate them. My grandma had a no leaving the table until you eat your food rule. Pretty reasonable, except she would prepare your plate, often with more food than you wanted. One time she made me a chicken salad sandwich but the chicken salad had turned. She wouldn't let me leave. She just sat across from me to make sure I didn't get up until I ate it. This went on for hours. Until my mom got off work and picked me up. It wasn't even that strict a household. I think she liked control and this was one of the few areas where she could exercise it. Listening to non-Christian music was punishable by being grounded for weeks. I wasn't allowed to be in my room for an extended period of time except to go to bed at night. Also, no naps. My laptop was required to stay in the living room at all times. When I started commuting to college because dorms were expensive, I was required to report to my father and stepmother's room every day as soon as I came home, and they would yell at me if I didn't come up without being told every day. Texts must be responded to immediately. My father threatened to report me as a missing person because he called me while I was on a shift that ended at 3am and didn't text him back until the next morning. One time, my stepmother asked for the full name, race, drug and crime history of a co-worker Hossa house I was going to to play D&D. It was only a one-off event, but still super weird. I'm sure there are more that I can't think of right now. But I've been no contact with them for going on 8 months now and so it's been a while since I interacted with their craziness. No music allowed when cleaning the house, because it would distract us. Also, not allowed to do anything with friends on a Sunday because it was family day, even though we never did anything as a family and just stayed shut in our rooms. Among other stupid, nonsensical rules, until I moved out at 17. I wasn't allowed to say fart because it's a swear word. If I needed to talk about farts, I had to call them fluffs. My best friend and I would kill ourselves over how silly this was. I'm 26 now and as much as my parents are proud of me for my life accomplishments so far, I know they're not proud of me for having a very extensive, dirty vocabulary. Feels good to prove to them I can talk like a degenerate and be successful. We had to wear a jacket if the weather was under a certain temperature. Even a single degree wouldn't sway my dad he kept a thermometer outside so he could check every morning. On the other hand, our health insurance sucked, so there's that. Once I grabbed a jacket out of the hall closet, sending everything else flying off the hangers and into a pile on the floor. I was halfway through my mile long walk to school when he pulled up in his car. His face red, refusing to talk to me. I thought something terrible had happened to my brother. When we got back to the apartment, he pointed at the hall closet. After I cleaned up, he refused to give me a late note. School had already started, or a ride. Once I saw him on campus at my high school, looking for me over the tops of kids' heads. 
I turned around and made a beeline for the bathroom. I have no idea what terrible transgression I committed that day. Left a jar of jelly open. Perhaps? I wasn't allowed to wear the color red because Nan said it was and I quote a color for W. No red clothes. Red nail polish. Red lipstick. Jewelry. Soon as I finished high school I dyed my hair fire truck red. Kept it for nearly 10 years. As a frick you to my Nan. It actually grew on her and she got really upset when I changed it. She just had the wrong color. It's really yellow. Also, this only applies about 2000 years ago. Locks on the fridge and pantry. Bars on the windows. Wasn't allowed to have a computer password. Not so much rules as paralyzing amounts of control. I was never allowed out with my friends. After school. The weekends. The holidays act I stopped being invited out after a while and internet became my friend. Might explain why I prefer online company. No deodorant. It was considered a perfume. And using perfumes was considered vain. There were a whole bunch of other ridiculous rules. But that was probably the most unusual. Dang not even the plain antiperspirant. That's rough. Couldn't go to prom because dancing was a devil's activity. Go to cut loose. Having to ask permission for everything. From having a snack to a glass of water to see something on TV. Sure, some of it might be reasonable, but because it applied to every single thing combined with very degrading comments, now as an adult, I struggle with figuring out what is normal when it comes to wanting things. I don't know what's allowed and what's not without asking, but asking a lot is awkward since other people just assume. This combined with a fear or failure and rejection tends to make unfamiliar, social situations awkward. One of my high school friends wasn't allowed out in the evenings. We were 16. So every Friday night he would go to bed early and then climb out of his bedroom window along a tiny ledge around the outside of the building and back through the window of the elevator lobby. He lived on the 18th floor and did this for like a year until his parents found out. Jesus that sounds dangerous as freak. It doesn't sound like much, but being punished for every mistake. Want to know what doing that gets you? It gets you a kid who is a very good liar. A kid that is so afraid to try anything new he stays in his comfort zone since failure is punished instead of learned from. And it gets you a kid who takes years to overcome the mental stigma of failure after they're out from under your house sold. Up, uh, I wasn't allowed to have a doorknob on my bedroom door. I wasn't allowed to speak to my stepdad, ever, for any reason. And of course the infamous, because I said so. Be home before sunset. The sun sets really early in my country and if it was an overcast day I could not tell. Every minute I was late was a day I was grounded. I mentioned this in another post some time ago, but I wasn't allowed to have guys call for me or come to the house, ever. Even when I was a child and dating sex was the furthest thing from anyone's minds. She thought it would make me turn out to be some little s. Unfortunately for her, shielding me from all those boys just made me slutty later on. Tons of them. But the worst was about a year period when we had to address our parents as mother dear and father dear and our siblings as brother dear and sister dear. My father was a sick butthole who just came up with that one day and strictly enforced it until he went on his next deployment. Luckily he forgot about it by the next time we saw him. There were a lot of TV shows I wasn't allowed to watch. Mainly things like Pokemon because it obviously promotes evolution. The big one though is I wasn't allowed to get my driver's license. I had to learn how to operate a car and drive in case of emergencies but was not allowed to get my license. There were extreme amounts of bitching and whining when I needed to be picked up late due to my after school activities or be dropped off at a Saturday competition. Then I was the ungrateful one if I complained about them yelling at me for having to go to an event for a school activity they signed me up for that I didn't want to do in the first place. Funny thing is that Pokemon doesn't even get evolution right. Pokemon evolution is really metamorphosis or simply aging. 16 year old me. Can I go to the coffee shop with some friends? I'm done with all homework and I promise to be back by bedtime. Dad, number, you already went out once this week. That was actually the last straw. Because he made that rule up on the spot and doubtlessly had every intention of enforcing it. I snuck out my window and left home. 
he found me a couple days later and it turned out, after talking to his cop buddies, that he couldn't have them arrest me unless I was found breaking laws. I agreed to talk to him and my stepmother, whereupon they told me I could either live by their rules or not live there again. No brain for me. Packed a couple bags of favorite clothes and got the f out. Stepmother tried to boot myself, 14 female, and my bro, 12 male, out because she didn't want us living with her. Dad realized if that happened, he would end up dealing with child services etc. So he compromised. As the female, I was allowed to still be living in the house but had to remain in my bedroom unless asked to come out for dinner. I had to ask to use the bathroom. My door had to be open at all times and no phone allowed. I was never allowed to be given cash so all of my stuff, school bus tickets, sanitary products etc, were bought for me. I often went without lunch as she wouldn't make it for us, only her son, and we weren't allowed in the kitchen. A teacher at school worked this out pretty quick and started bringing me food each day. My bro was not allowed in the house. He lived in a van, I mean a little work van, around the side and had allocated shower and bathroom times. He had to eat outside. He thought it was cool. One day when I was 15, the police came to my school and said I couldn't go home as my bro had done something to set her off and she had chased him up the street with a broom, then come back in and trashed my room and the van with an axe. That's not strict. That's abusive. Not allowed to close the door of my room from my 15 to my 18. I remember when I was a teenager, I went to a friend's house once to play some video games and felt strange the whole time but couldn't put my finger on why. Only when I was about to leave did I realize, his bedroom had no door. It had been taken completely off the hinges. I knew his parents were hyper religious but that was nuts to me. Super safe great neighborhood. I was a goody two shoes rule follower. I wasn't allowed to get dropped off at the mall with my friends without an adult when I was 13. Among other things. Eventually the other girls stopped calling and inviting me places. Then my mom thought there was something wrong with me bc I didn't have any friends. She'd get really mad at me and try to force me to invite kids over to our house to do dumb crap like play dolls. No thanks. When I was 22 I finally made a friend and was going to crash at her house in the city after seeing a late play. She made my friend come in and meet her and asked her questions about where we were going and who would be there, who was driving, what their driving record was like. Humiliating. I moved out 2 months later without telling anyone, to a ghetto apartment that I couldn't afford on my PT retail paycheck, went to metal bars every night until 2am and kept unsavory male company at my place. Mum's parenting backfired a little bit. Reminds me of the time my friend, who had just gotten her license, was going to pick me up and we were going to go to the mall. My mom was pee. She made my friend do a 20 minute road test with her in the car before I was allowed to ride with her. Couldn't believe she was still friends with me after that. No doors. Not even for the bathroom. When I went to a friend's house for the first time I never got invited over again since I crap with the door open. 1. There was only one correct way to put on socks. 2. I had to take the same size bites of food every time. Nothing too small or too large. 3. I had to put on my right foot shoe on first, and never the other way around. 4. Every morning I had to greet my parents with a good morning and every night I was to say good night before going to bed. 5. If I was going to eat a cookie, I had to tilt my head back and bite at the cookie so that the crumbs would fall into my mouth. 6. If I wanted to talk to my parents it had to be about current events, even if I was just 11 years old. Take your pick from any of those as to which one was the craziest. No friends allowed at the house. No sitting in the living room. My grandma died without anyone sitting in her living room. During her wake funeral everyone who knew her could not shore comfortably in that room. It was a freaky shrine. So this was something I only really came to understand after I'd left home and gotten some perspective on my childhood. But basically, my sister and I were not permitted to ever be angry. It wasn't that we weren't allowed to shout or raise our voices. That was a given. It wasn't that we weren't allowed to talk back or argue. That was also a given. It wasn't even about not getting violent or something. There was no question of that. It was that we were never supposed to display any signs of being angry. Being angry isn't nice and we were supposed to be nice little girls who only said, did, and thought nice things. 
So it didn't matter how horribly I was being bullied or how staggeringly unfair something was or how cheated I felt about another unreasonable change of mind on my parents part. I was never allowed to get angry, and if I was angry I was not allowed to let that show in any way. There would be enforced smiling. Being made to say thank you daddy for making sure I don't waste money on the thing you promised I'd be allowed to buy or whatever was necessary to make sure that out of the emotional autonomy and willfulness was absolutely stamped out of me. It wasn't that we were taught to manage our anger and deal with issues in a more reasonable way. We were just expected to repress it all and never mention it. For anyone out there who might be wondering what the longer term life consequences of that might be, rest assured that it involves a lot of very messy relationship problems and a lot of fairly harrowing therapy. Trying to learn how to experience and express anger for the first time in your late 20s is stupidly uncomfortable. My parents are literally this, they be and complain, yet I'm not allowed to when I'm near them, even when it's not directed at them, because me being angry means I'm acting stupid. You have been visited by the lemon shibby like in 3 seconds or you will never have vitamin C again. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.